Okay, so Bismillah. Uh, I assume that you're all able to hear me. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. So I think we will start, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, I should kind of, a, a few of you, a few of you handed in your uh, assignments uh, for Surah Baqarah. Although I did, I did say it's optional the first week. Uh, shukran for those of you who handled in. I've, I've looked through some of them, alhamdulillah. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with going through the answers of the assignment from last week. And then we will do Surah Al-Fatiha after that, inshallah. So I think we we'll start off with the assignment from last week. And then we will go through Surah Al-Fatiha after that. So in the last week's assignment, um, we gave you the first four verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And we had a number of questions. So the first question was for verse number two, which originally in your worksheet said one, but it should have been two. Uh, it says, identify the mubtada, the ismul ishara, two harful jars, and two ismul majroors. So who wants to tell me in that verse, where is the mubtada? Uh, the Muqtada would be the Al-Kitabu. The Muqtada will be Al-Kitabu. When you say... Um, okay, let me ask a question differently. Why, why do you say that's the Muqtada? Because um, it's... Uh, you, you first got the Ismail Ishara, which is the, the Alika, and then... Um, so also the Al Kitabu as the Muqtada, the rest of the sentence as the Khabar. Okay, okay, but, but I'm asking, what about Al Kitabu makes you say that's the Muqtada? Um, it's in Raf. Okay, good. It's got the Al at the first. Okay, so, okay. So let me ask you a question about the Dalika. Is the Dalika Ism Fi'al or Harf? Um, the Dalika would be a ism. It would be an ism. Good. And Dalika is an ism. Yeah? Is Dalika, Dalika means that. Is it a definite or indefinite yeah. ism? Um, indefinite. If I say that book, am I speaking about something definite or so, indefinite? So, 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 definite, definite, definite. Okay, so it's definite ism. And now the, the, the golden question, what is the hal of the Dalika? Um, it would be in sure. if, I, if, I, if I can help uh, the Dalika is a ismul ishara yeah and there was something we said about the word of the ismul ishara if it has an al I don't know if you remember the word of the ismul ishara if it's got the al um, it's then a mashara nilay Good. And what's the quality of the Musharan Ilay? Um, the Hal. The, the Hal, the yes. So, 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 so what's the quality of the Hal of the Musharan Ilay? It will, it will follow the, the Hal of the Ismu Ishar. Good. So, the, so Al Kitabu is actually the Musharan Ilay. It will follow the Hal of the Ismu Ishar. So what's the hal of the ismul ishara? So the alika there. Yeah. So no, if 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 al kitabu. Yeah. Okay. What's the hal of al kitabu? Raf. Raf. And al kitabu is following the hal of the alika. Okay, so it will be in, in raf as well. Okay. Why why I asked you all those questions was because the alika is actually. An ism, which is definite, which is raf'un. Okay. Are you with me? The yeah. dhalika is an ism, which is definite in, in raf'un. And the al-kitab, you actually gave me the answer. You, told, you, you gave me the answer when I said, what comes after the ismul ishara? Yeah, the musharun ilay. The musharun ilay. So this al-kitab is actually the... Musharun ilay. Okay. So if that's a Musharun ilay, then where is the Muqtada? Um, the ilay is normally definite, rough, 
and at the beginning of the sentence normally. So both of them. So it will, you, we will say actually that the the dalika itself. Yeah. So, so both of them, yes, because they're actually one construction, they're one unit. But mm. that dalika there would actually be the mubtada. Okay. So we, when I say, uh, for example, let's say I took out the word kitab and I say dalika la reba fihi. Will it still make sense? Yes. It will still uh, make because I'm, I'm pointing to something. I'm saying that. Yeah, Obviously, pointing yeah. to the and say la reba fi. So even with al, without the al kitab, it will still mm. make sense. So the yeah. focus of the sentence is the dalika, and the okay. al kitab is actually part of it. Okay. Cool. The al kitab is actually actually part of it. Okay. Good. That was the, the difficult the difficult question, friend. The difficult question, friend. Okay. Good. Mashallah. Where are the two harful jars? Uh, the harf called jaw will be the fi, uh, by okay, fi good. and mm -hmm. the li by lil muttaqin. Okay, so that's going to be a simple hajim, yeah, harf al jar, and then the li, so fi and the li. And where is it to ism majrurs? And they after the harf al jaw, so it'll be and uh, muttaqin. Good, so the he, and then remember the he is attached pronoun. But it's uh, the, the, the the label here is a ismul majrur because it comes after harful jar. Uh, so this must be a is majrur and it's a harful jar. Okay, that's a harful jar. Okay, good. So so tell me, are, 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 are you are you are you are you are you okay with, with that with that muftada there? Yeah, yeah. So, so is the is the the rest of the sentence after al kitab still the khabar? Okay, so 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 let's ask the question number two. So question number two says, "What is the news of the muptada?" So if we say dalika is is the muptada, where does the news start? Um, la reba. Okay, good. La reba. In other words, the dalika, the kitab is linked to dalika because it's musharun ilay. So what's going to happen is that this part here. Is the the news of the the mubtara. This obviously is linked to this here because it's a, a musharun ilay, and then this whole part here is going to be news. Khabar about that. Dalik al kitab. In other words, I'm pointing to a book and I'm saying dalik al kitabu that book. So what's the news about it? Araiba fihi yudanil muttaqin. So yeah. So in initial it will be what that book. What's the news? Uh, there is no doubt in it, and it is a guidance for those who are conscious. Okay, good, perfect. So that's the the construction of the sentence. But Abbas, thank you so much. Okay, perfect. So that is going to be the the first one. Uh, if you have any questions from anybody else, you can just jump in, inshallah, and just um, ask, brother Kanit. Uh, um, I, I enjoyed your 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 your, your, digital, your digital assignment. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Bismillah. Um, the Raiba, Maulana, is that is that a nasb? And if it is, why would that be nasb? Okay, good. That's a, a good a good question, good observation. Um according to, what, what do you find strange about the word Raiba? It is indefinite. And it is it is um, um, a what 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 do you say? It's a light word. Oh, no, no, no. It's a light word. Good. So good. So the first thing is that if you see a light word, it must jump out at you. Like a light word, you don't randomly have light words in Arabic. There must be a reason for it. In other words, normally the word raib, which means doubt, is like bait. If there's no al, must say baitun, and if there's no al on raib, it should say raibun. So it's very unusual to have reiba instead of reibun, reibun. So the answer is uh, that it's something we haven't done yet, but uh, that la is actually a special la. I won't give you the whole lesson about it now. We'll do it in second year, inshallah. That la is a special la. That la, there's a normal la. The normal la would mean la reibun fihi. That's a normal la. But the special la is la reiba fihi. And this la is the la of absolute negation 
So in other words, you get a law of like normal negation, la reba fihi, there's la reibun fihi, that would be the law of normal negation, there's no doubt in it. But this law is a special law, it means that there is absolutely no form of doubt, no conception of doubt. It's almost like a, it's like a, it's like a, a, a complete negation of any form of it. So it's a much stronger negation. So to answer your question, that's a special law, and that law makes the next word have a single fatha. Well, can you with me? Yes, now, if I ask you a question, when you when you when when someone becomes Muslim, what do they say? Uh, okay, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha. We don't say la. You say la ilaha illallah. We don't say la ilahun illallah. Shukran. And you can see that la ilaha is the same la there. It's a special la. It's not, it's not saying that like there's no God and well, there's no. They're saying there's absolutely no God, no idea of God, no conception of God, illallah except Allah. So that, that la is the la of total negation. And the way you can see it is that you, you see the next verse there. Now, uh, assignment two uh, has Ayatul Kursi also contains it. Yes, that's right. Okay, good. Mashallah. I hope you enjoyed this assignment. Uh, I, like, I, want you to, I want you to enjoy your work. So hopefully you enjoyed the assignment, inshallah. Verse number three. Verse number three. Now, bismillah. Sitaira, bismillah. Um, so I wanted to ask, so you said the law of negation, the, of absolute negation, means it will be the the, the, bow, the third letter will be nasb, so la ilaha, and it will be light. So it does two things. Yes, yes, yes. It will basically have a okay. single fatha. So I like see. la ilaha, if I can just pull up a clear. Uh, for example, this is assignment number two. We can say there, Allahu la Ilaha. If you can see it here, you can say the same thing here. La ilaha. It's light and there's a there's, there's a single fatha there. Oh, okay. Okay. Shukran. Okay. So whenever you see that, then that's like a it's called it's called the law of like total negation. It's a it's like a more emphatic law than a normal law. A more emphatic law than a, a normal law. Okay. Good. Bismillah, verse number three. So, uh, Darikal uh, Kitabu. And sorry, just uh, just to mention that that some people, some translate. Actually, a lot of translators would translate Dalika. Uh, okay, there's so a lot of tafsir here which I haven't done before, but Dalika normally means that. And then I should have written that there because that's the literal meaning. Uh, but many Mufassirun will translate it as this for linguistic reasons, which I don't get into now. And Al-Kitabu, uh, many translators, 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 translators will say this is the book, and others will say this book. Um, the reason for that is that there's a difference of opinion with regard to Al-Kitabu, whether it is Musharun Ilay or whether it's a Khabar, uh, both opinions can exist. But I'm just keeping it to the default ones that we've learned uh, so far, but both opinions exist within, within Nahu. So just to, in case you came across that. Um, now, next one. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ الَّذِينَ ذَوْزُ يُؤْمِنُونَ They believe بِالْغَيْبِ in the unseen. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ And they establish a salah, the prayer. وَمِمَّا And from that which رَزَقَنَاهُمْ We have uh, provided for them. يُنْفِقُون They spend. So in this uh, assignment, if you find certain things difficult, that's fine. Because the idea is that as you find it difficult at home in the assignment, and you come to class and we mark it together, then you basically it unlocks it and you, you kind of find the answer afterwards. So Bismillah, who's going to start off with the first question? For each word, identify whether it is an ism, a fi'al, or a harf. Who wants to go? Assalamu alaikum Malala. Can you hear me? Alaysha, I'm going to say Alhamdulillah. 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 All good. Alaysha also is one of those who submitted the assignment. 
I'm just saying don't that talk, we encourage don't, don't, don't ask me more on that. <laughs> no, I, I have to submit I, I, the I, next I, assignment on time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to screen share it, don't worry. Yeah, hopefully not. A <laughs> lot of, lot of wrong, wrong uh, mistakes on that. <laughs> Bismillah. Okay. okay, so we'll go inshallah. <clears throat> yes, Alladina. Alladina is an ism. Alladina is an, is an, oh, let me just get my uh, right character. Is an ism. Alladina ism, good. What type of ism is it? Okay, that's, that's coming later. It's coming later? Come no, yeah. it's not coming later. Yeah. Okay, now what's what, what type of word is Alladina? Alladina is um. I have this written down. One second, Malana. It's an ismul mausul. An ismul mausul. Good. Mm. Ismul mausul. One of the last ones. That, the last ones that we did. Mm. Okay. Bismillah. Yaminuna is a fi'l. Yu'minuna is a fi'l, good. Bil ghaib, so the B is a harf. Good. And the uh, ghaib is a ism. The ghaib is a ism, good. Yeah. Wa is a harf. Good. Yu'minuna is a fi'l. Good. As-salata is an ism. So. Good. Wa is a harf. Then the next one, I think, I, I think it's correct. Uh, what I have is uh, the mimma. So the first meme is a harf, and then the second mm -hmm. part is a ism. Okay, good. Uh, I'll explain to the class afterwards. But we're get on. Razakuna ism. Razakuna. Just try it again. Razakuna. Doesn't sound familiar. فعلنا, رزقنا. So would that be a fi'l? Okay, there's a few parts to it. There's a few yeah. parts. So, 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 so you, okay, okay, ma'am. So, okay, so la is a ism, which is right. And then wa is a harf, which is right. And min is also a harf. And ma is an ism, which is right. I'll come to that later on. And okay, razakana. So what's happening yeah. there? Okay, so it might be two words, razak and then the na. Okay. So, what, so what's then, the, the razak part? If you look at the translation, the first part then be a fi'l, ma'ana. Fi'l, like fa'alna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa'ala, fa'alna. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. The razakana, so it's basically going to be a, a fi'l. And then now, obviously, it's going to be the fa'il. So yeah, the yeah, fa'il yeah. will be will be an ism, you write this. That yeah, fa'il okay. part will be an ism. And the whom? Okay. Whom is a harf? Because it's a it's a damir. Mm -hmm. So would that be a, a harf then? How do you translate whom? Whom is uh, them? Them, so, referring to people. Yeah, okay. So, so would that be ism or fa'il? Or ism, harf? Then. And ism, good. Yeah, see, I made a lot of mistakes, Malana. <laughs> um, no, so then, alhamdulillah. Bismillah. And the last word is a fi'l. The last word is a fi'l. Good. And uh, technically, obviously, the una, the in will be the fa'il, but this is a fi'l is fine. Good. It's going to be a, a fi'l. Okay, good. So, uh, a few things here. Okay, mashallah. So, so this is uh, a good practice just to identify ism, fi'l, or har. So, alladhina, it's referring to a group of people, those who. So, it's going to be an ism. Yu'minuna is a verb. The una part of the in is actually uh, is uh, the fa'il, so that una part will be an ism, but just leave it for now. The una part will be they they believe, but the una will be the they, but it's fine for now, we'll make it a fi'il. The bi, harf. What type of harf? Harful jar. The ghayb, it will be an ism, the unseen. Wa, and, and is a, is a harf. That wa, there is not a harful jar, just a normal wa, a conjunction wa. Yuqimuna, a verb, good, ism. Uh, as salata, ism, good. Wa, again, means and, harf. Mimma, so I'll just do mimma quickly. Mimma is two words. It's min, min plus ma equals mimma. So min plus ma equals equals mimma. So if you translate min, it means from, and ma means that which. 
So that which is referring to to things like wealth, whatever thing, things. So that ma is going to be an an ism, and the min is going to be a harf. Min ism, and the ma is a harf. Razaq, razaq is a fi'l. The na is the, obviously referring to Allah. We, which is the ism, and the hum is an ism, and the yunfiquna is a, a fi'l. But the una part again there is going to be the fa'il. So technically, these una parts here yeah, at the end. Technically, these una parts at the end. This una part here yeah, at the end will be the ism because the una part will be the will be the fa'il. The una part at the end will be a, a ism because it will be the fa'il. Okay. And because Arabic is a language where um, I don't know what you say. It's like you, 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 you're able to join words together. You join a harf al to a ism al You join a, a, fi, a, a fa'il to a, a verb. You have many more words than you have like, I mean, they are, they are, they are, they are words combined. So you have lots of, lots of labels. Lots of labels. Okay, good. So number two. Who is the Alladina referring to? Who wants to go? Bismillah. Who is the Alladina referring to? And how many actions are attributed to Alladina? Malana, Who is, is it al referring, is it referring to the Lil Muttakina? Those conscious of Allah. Good, good. So the first thing is that is that is that the answer is correct 100 percent So when you see Alladina in the Quran, which you'll see Alladina a lot in the Quran, you'll see many, many verses of Alladina, many verses starting with Alladina. You always have to go back and see what the first reference was. So Allah will refer to a, a, a group of people. Believers, non-believers, people of the past, whatever the case is, people of Jannah, people of Jahannam, Allah will refer to the group of people, then Allah will say, Alladina, 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 but you have to go back to know who it, re who it refers to. So, in other words, this muttaqeen is the Alladina. Good. So, it is a guide for muttaqeen, the people of taqwa. Now, Allah wants to take this word muttaqeen and give you the components of muttaqin. Like he has a title called muttaqin, which we know as those who are conscious of Allah, those who fear Allah, those who are mindful of Allah. But let's expand and say, what are the components of muttaqin? How many actions do we have for muttaqin? Three. Three. Which are the three actions? They believe in the unseen, they establish prayer, and they spend from which that which they've been provided. Okay. One, two, Three. One, two, three. Good. So, so these are important constructions. So I'm looking at it here from a Nahu point of view. Well, I know your volume is off. Oh, is that? Okay, are you guys able to hear me? Sorry, my. Uh, yes, Okay, it's not as clear, but I think it should be fine, Sean. So these are, uh, so this breakdown of Alladina, uh, which has three different um, verbs attached to it, or three different actions that attached to it, is important because it gives us a breakdown of Quranic concepts. So, what are the three concepts here? The three concepts is are that the first quality and, and especially uh, as introduction to Islam, Surah Baqarah is placed first or well, second after the Fatiha, but first, the first major long surah uh, where Allah introduces the muttaqeen. 
And Allah says about them, Yu'minuna bi the ghayb, is that the first thing that the people of taqwa have is that they have iman. And iman generally is going to be something which is located within your, within your heart, within your mind, within your, your inside. It's not normally like a physical thing. Obviously, you can express iman on your tongue, but there's a belief inside of you that you believe in that which is unseen. Unseen. So unseen would be you believe in Allah. Unseen would be you believe in revelation. Unseen would be you believe in angels. Unseen would be you believe in the past stories of the previous Anbiya. Unseen will be you believe in the future stories about Qiyamah and Jannah and Jahannam. This is all going to be part of the unseen. So that's the first thing. The second thing is going to be uh, that they establish prayer and from that which we have provided for them, they give. These are the fundamental two actions you have in your life is that you give of yourself and number two, you give of your possessions. That's all you can give in your life actually is you can give of yourself, your own time, your own energy, your own dedication or you can give of that which you, which you own. So Allah is saying that this, these three things are the qualities of the muttaqin and you can't drop any of them. You can't like leave off any of them. Um, uh, all of them form part of fundamental iman. Iman is part of, you know, part of our fundamentals. To establish prayer and to give of yourself to Allah Ta'ala, to connect to Allah Ta'ala is part of your fundamentals and to give of what you earn, what you own is part of the fundamentals of offering. Okay, good. This is the Tawheed Um, Just the, uh, in terms of the sentence construction with Muqtada Habar, how is that? Because that's not a sentence on its own. Mm -hmm. So basically, so the al would, would take would take different uh, positions. So in this case, yeah, the al would actually be a sifa for al muttaqin In other words, it's like a continuation of this previous sentence. So if I had to break it down, then al is a sifa for al muttaqin and the rest of the sentence is an explanation of al -Ladina. In other words, verse two and three are it's one long sentence. Shukran, Allah. Okay. So, so there, there's no muktara khabar there because you have a sifa. And what you have is after the sifa, you have three jumlatul, uh, uh, jumlatul fi'liyas. Uh, three jumlatul fi'liyas after the, after the sifa. Good, brother Shah, bismillah. Well, I'll just so that I understand this correctly, please. So are we saying because verse, um, I think it's verse four, verse three is, isn't a, a sentence, so to say, it's a fragment, like even in English, when you read it, that's why the, the Allah the na refers back to the previous um, verse. Yes. Even if you read the English, if you say yeah, yeah. those who believe in the unseen, they establish prayer and from that you should they spin. You're still waiting for something. Okay. Like if I, if I say the first part, those who believe in the unseen, is that a sentence? No, 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 it's not. It doesn't have any, any, yeah, it, it's not a sentence. Yeah, so now it's a continuation. But if I say it is a guide for those who believe in the unseen, is that a sentence? Yeah, then, then there's a complete meaning attached with it. Yeah, so therefore, so, so, yes. So if there was some other thing at the end of the, the some other information at the end of this ayah, then would that Allah, could that Allah be um, referring to something else rather than previous ayah? Um, it generally only refers to the previous ayah, but there might be additional khabars giving me more yeah. news about it. Okay. Like it could be Allah, uh, they are going to be of those who are in paradise. So it's giving mm -hmm. you more news about them, but it'll it also be in reference to the same group of people. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Shukran, cool. So I, I think, so one of the things to, to appreciate from the outset here is that an ayah in the Quran doesn't correspond, correspond to a sentence. So in other words, we have one sentence that's, uh, that's, that spans like two verses here, but even within verse number two, I have small sentences. Yu'minu bin ghaib is a sentence. If I say, they believe in the unseen. That's a full sentence. They establish prayer. Full sentence. And from that which we have provided them, they spend. 
full sentence. And as we have one, two, three jumlas here, but they're part of a bigger jumla that expands over two ayats. Okay, so that's uh, just to, to bear in mind uh, when reading the, the Quran. Good. Number question next. Identify the fa'il for each verb. Where is the fa'il for each verb? So the if are all the verbs. So where is the fa'il for each verb? Who wants to go? Mulana, it's at the end of each verb, the una. Okay, so okay, let's go, go to each one. Yu'minuna, the una is the fa'il. Yuqimuna, the una is the fa'il. Abad razaqnahum. Which is the Razaq and also a, a, a verb. Who wants to would, it the, would it not be the na? The na good. And the yunfiquna, the una. So what, what we recognize there when it comes to a fi'l mudari, which is yaf alu, yaf aluna. Or it could be taf alu, taf aluna. When it comes to fi'al mudari, uh, a very common fa'il is going to be the una at the end. When it comes to maldi, it's going to be the na. Fa'alna or fa'altu or fa'alta or fa'altum. That's going to be the, the fa'il. So the fa'il is the una, una, na, and the una. Good. What are the grammar labels for the underlined words? So bil ghaybi. What are the grammar labels for Bill Ghaibi? No, no. Okay, um, the B would be a harful char. Good. The Ghaibi is a small majroor. Good. As salata? As salata said is a mafunun B. Mafunun B, good. They establish what? They establish pretty good. What is the Nahum? That's the min. The min is a harful char. Min ma. I think that's the oh, okay. so, so min is harful char and the ma is a? Is a majroor. Again. So majroor, good. And then the whom is mafoulun bi. And the whom is mafoulun bi. Okay, perfect. So let me just that quickly. So the bi, harful jar. After harful jar, come ism majroor, ghaibi. Good. So bi, harful jar, ghaib, ismul majroor. Yuqi muna is a verb. They establish. What do they establish? As salata, mafoulun bi. Min, min ma is min plus ma. Min is harful jar, and ma is ismul majroor. Razaqa nahum, razaqa is the fi'al, the na is the fa'il, we provide, and who do we provide? We provide whom, them, the dana part. This again, it's going to be maf'olun, good. Next, verse number uh, four. Ula'ika ala hudam min rabbihim wa ula'ika humul mufbihun. Ula'ika, those. So who are those referring to? Al-ladhina yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqa nahum yufiqun. It's referring to the muttaqin. What about the muttaqin? Ula'ika, those ala, they are upon hudan, they are upon guidance, the rabbihim, from the Lord, wa ula'ika, and those humul muflihun, they are the successful. What type of word is ula'ika? What type of word is ula'ika? Anybody? What are words like? Assalamu alaikum, Adana. Assalamu alaikum, Adana. Is it a ismul isharu? Perfect. Ismul isharu. You can tell me the umis one time also. Ismul isharu. Oh, the umis is a damir. It's a damir. And tell me, is it attached damir or a detached damir? Um, it's a detached Tamir, man. Uh, in this verse, it's detached or attached. Ulaika ala hudam mi rabbihim. Wa ulaika ahum. It's a detached in this one, right. Tamir, it's a Tamir. If you want to add it, you can add it as a Tamir. Munfasil. Munfasil means detached from that. Good. Where would you insert the E's or the R in the sentence? Where would you insert the E's or the R in the sentence? Which means I want to go. Uh, after the Ismaili Shara. 
Ulaika. You add an easier and the second one? Yeah. Will the second one be? Yeah. What, what does Monazai ask, Ma? So the so both will be end after Ulaika. Yes. Yeah. Good. So, because so, there's no visible owl. Okay, good. So if we're adding an ease or all, what type of sentence do we think it is? What do you, what type of sentence um, do you think it is? Jumlatu uh, Jumlatu ismiya. What are two parts of Jumlatu ismiya? A muktada and khabar. Good, a muktada and a khabar. So what I want you to see here, which is the more difficult thing to see in, in the sentence here, is that ulaika is actually the muktada. Ulaika is a muktada. And then that ulaika is also a muktada. So we can do it maybe just in terms of meaning, because that will also make sense to you. If I say ulaika, those, and ulaika is an ismul ishara, it's pointing to a group of people. Ishara means the point. Ulaika, those. So in your mind, even you can refer to Allah is like indicating towards a group of people. And Allah says, ulaika, those, ala hudam rabbihim, those group of people, those muttaqin, they are. Ulaika is, I guess you should say, say, say oh yeah. Ulaika, those are upon guidance from the Lord. So in other words, there's a focus, which is Ulaika, and there's news about Ulaika. What's the news about Ulaika? They are on guidance from the Lord. What's the second piece of news about Ulaika? Ulaika, humul mufiqun. Ulaika, they are the ones who are successful. So there's ulaika, which is the focus of the sentence, and there's a piece of news about them, and there's ulaika, which is the focus and the piece of news. So what's different here is that we learn khabar in a different way, but just in terms of meaning, you can see there's a focus and there's news. Focus and there's news. Good. What are the grammar labels for the underlined words? Mulana, just on the previous one. Yes. I initially went with Ula Ika, but on the second one, um, if you if you try to try to translate it with the R after the Ula Ika, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound right. So eventually I went with the R should go after whom. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. Um, so to answer your question, there's different ways of understanding that construction in the grammar. Ula Ika humul muflihun. So I don't look at too technical, um, but let me just, okay, let me ask a question differently. Ula'ika humul muflihun. What would happen if I took away the hum? What, the, what, would, what would it be if I took away the hum? Then the R would fall away, Chef. So yes, it'll be, it, it will be, a, it won't be a Muqtada Khabar, it'll be um, the Ismul Ishara and the, is it Musharun Ilay? How do you, how do you, how do you translate it then? It'll be, um, those, suc uh, those successful. Those successful. So in other words, the whom is, is added there to make, make a gap between it. So, so, in some translations, they, they won't even translate the whom. In other words, the whom will just be there to, to make the gap and just to make the gap for the easy R. So, ulaika, those are the successful. So, that's the one thing, so it might be a gap. But in other approaches to Nahu, whom, how do you translate whom and muflihun? Whom and muflihun, whom and muflihun. They are successful. Like whom? They are successful. So you can put the R there. They are successful. But then, don't, don't get too confused about this, but then this whole construction is a Jumlatul Ismiya, whom al muflihun. but then there's another R before the bracket also. I'm not saying you translate it like that. I'm saying that there is another R because this could be a muqtada and this could be a muqtada and this could be a khabar. I'll, 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 I'll also go through slowly now, inshallah. Humul muflihun means they are the successful, that's a muqtada, that's a khabar. 
but this year ulaika what's the news about them the, the whole news about them is humul muflihun so this whole thing is a khabar for that mitra ulaika give me news about them the news about them is that they are the successful ulaika those are the ones who are successful so to answer your question um there's a difference between analyzing the grammar and then rendering it into english so to answer your question yes you are right you can put a, a whom a r after the whom because i can be mutara and khabar and this whole thing here can be a khabar for the sutra if i confused you it's okay um it's not really for first year but uh, just stay with you because that's the full answer. Shukran uh, Yeah. And then so, so then just to say that, that that some people don't make the huma mutara khabar they make the hum just a, like an extra word. Okay. Then the ulaika is the mutara and the and the al mutrifun is the khabar. They call they call the hum like a spacer. It's called a fasl. So in other words it depends on how which grammar approach we use. Okay. I think the thing about about Arabic grammar is that um Arabic grammar used to be, it wasn't codified at the time of the Quran. What I mean codified, there wasn't a grammar textbook, there wasn't a, a documented system of grammar. There was a system of grammar, but the system of grammar was, was embedded within the language that wasn't extracted and detailed yet. And then Ali Radiallahu Anhu, he is the one who actually, uh, he commanded, someone I think called, called Abu Aswad Abu Ali. He actually commanded him to take the Quran and to document the rules of grammar because now Islam was spread into non-Muslim countries. In other words, the rules of grammar were documented after the revelation of the Quran, but based on the Quran. Um, so therefore, there might be a difference of opinion with regard to a rule, even though we agree on the verse. as how we apply the rule might differ from time to, from time, to time. Good, and that's basically the end of the end Sorry, of Malina, the, no, just another, another question. So um, that wa ulaika humu muflihun. So the ismu ishara. So normally we say if if it's if the word following the ismu ishara is, is starts with the al, then that's a mushara ilay. Yes. So yes. in this case, you you say that humu is just a, 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 a filler. So it almost gets ignored then. It's a filler, it's actually called a separator. A separator. A separator, yes. Okay. So it's, okay. it can be, it can be see, so what I'm saying is there's two approaches. You can say ulaika is the muqtara, wumi is the separator, and al mufiqun is the khabar. So those are the successful. Or you can say wumi is the muqtara, and al mufiqun is the khabar, and this muqtara and khabar, this whole thing is a khabar for the ulaika. There's two ways of approaching the grammar. And both are both are fine. But both come to the same the same the same meaning. Okay. Okay. Good. So if I take a pause and look at the structure of this, because I think I, I, I like enjoy structures and and concepts and schemas and so on, is that the verse starts with a declaration about the, the book of Allah. And it says kitabu, that book or this book or whatever we can talk about as la reba fihi, there is absolutely no doubt in it. So it's like I open the Quran. You, you open the Quran and it just tells you that whatever you read here, there is going to be no doubt in it. But for you to be guided, for you to be guided, you have to be from amongst the, the muttaqin. The muttaqin. In other words, only the muttaqin will derive full guidance from this book. Because someone can come to the, the, the book of Allah and be someone who opposes the book or someone who is indifferent to the book. Uh, but the book is a guide for the people of taqwa. Then Allah qualifies who the people Sorry, of Malina. Taqwa. Sorry, Malina. Sorry, Malina. Sorry to break your, 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 your thought. Just that, you, that, that last uh, question, you didn't do the, the grammar labels for the underlined words. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do it now, inshallah. I'll do it now. Shukran for reminding me. So, so I'll come back, come back to them at the end, inshallah. So, so who are the people of taqwa? There are three verbs given to them. So there's three verbs. 
And these are the, the, the main three categories. You have to have Iman and you have to have good action. Good action is what? To give of yourself in connecting to Allah Ta'ala and give of what you of what you own. And then what is the, the destination or the result of this? That those group of group of people, the muttaqin, they are upon guidance from their Lord and eventually essentially the destination is that they are the ones who are al-muflihun that are successful in this life and in the, the next life so this is going to be a summary of the muttaqun at the beginning of the quran because the next part is about al waladina kafaru so it's going to be the that's going to be the the, the the layout of it in terms of grammar there's a lot, a lot to say about it but let's just say that the muttaqin is the focus not the focus it is the who the guidance is for then there's a sifa that's described in the muttaqin it has three parts, and then there's a ulaika um, who's also referring to the muttaqin as well, and then it's giving you two things about them. Allahu dami rabbihim wa ulaika humul mufli humul mufli. Good. So, what are the grammar labels for the underlined words? Bismillah, once again. Allahu dami rabbihim wa ulaika. Bismillah. Well, like a Easy one. Um, the would be a harful jar. Good. Who then? Yes, Majrur, because it follows a harful jar. Okay, good. One of the questions is why is who then with an an? Is it not one of those words that can't be changed? It's just. Good. It's one of those words that Wuda, Musa, Taqwa. It's it was Arabic speech as a mud at the end, a mud sound, Huda, Huda, Hudan, Huda. Those words can't be changed at the end. So that word Hudan mm. is in what hal? Rough, no? Not rough one after No, 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 no. Um, with the kasrat and. Yes. Um, how am I blanking on this? Rough, last word, Jar. Jar, Jar. Yeah, good. <laughs> Didn't drink enough coffee this morning, Molana. <laughs> <laughs> then the min and the roi. Uh, uh, the mean is a harmful job, and the next good. word is Ismail Majrur because it follows. And the him? Rabbi him is a Ismail, Rabbi him will be a Rabbi will be Ismail Majrur, right? And the him, good. Uh, is a, would that be a Damir? It is a Damir, yes, but what's a grammar label? Well, I know left help me there. I'm not thinking straight. Well, I know that would often delay. It's going to be a good someone may help you out there. Because remember, light and then yeah, attached to any ism is always mobile for delay. They load or the load of them. Like, okay, to and then the next word is as we discussed would be a muqtada. It's a also another label for next which we haven't done yet, but the next one is also it's part of a, a con. Oh no, okay, Muktada is fine, but this whole part is part of the conjunction here, yeah? but that's fine. It's a Muktada. Okay, good. Any questions? Miss Mina. Mona, in these in the last one we identified two Muktadas. So for the first one, what is the khabar? Would it be ala hudan? Good. So so this is also something something we do next year, but. Um, in English, what, what is the, the English khabar for ulaika? Uh, in the translation? Yeah, like in, if I ask you those, what's the news about them? Uh, or upon guidance, or upon guidance. Okay, and you can add me Rabbim as well, just to complete it from the Lord. That would be cool. mm -hmm. so This whole part here, uh, this whole part, Rabbihim, well, we don't say it's a khabar, we say it will take the place of the khabar. We say that this whole Allah Dhammi Rabbihim will take the place of the Khabar. We'll give and similarly with the next one. Yeah. And good, so if I ask you again, what's the news about Ulaika? Or the successful. But they are the successful. So Humul Mukluhun, this whole part here will take the place of the Khabar. It's actually quite an important lesson that we learned here is that, is that sometimes other things take the place of the Khabar. 
I'll give you a, a very simple example. If I say, Arrajulu Tawilun. Arrajulu is a mutara. What is the khabar there? What do you think you can answer, Bismillah? Tawilun. Yes. Yes. That part. So in English, the English, what is the khabar there? What is that? Is that tall? I can't remember now. He's tall, yes. Yeah. He's tall. But now I'm going to give you another sentence. I say, Arrajulu fil bayti. The man in the house. Arrajulu fil bayti. So you would translate it as the man is in the house. So I can This is like a side lesson. But, uh, but isn't those don't have the same, uh, they're not both in the rough. Yeah, so Arajulu fil bayti. Oh, that's because the fee changes it to bayti. Okay. I have it here. If I say Arajulu fil bayti. What is fil bayti? In the house. In the house. How to get and It's so much of it. Yeah, I was looking for off, that's why. No, it's good. You must have put off because that, that, that's what, what, what you learned so far. That mm. the the news will be in Rafun. The news will be in Rafun, like a Rajulu Tawilu. However, what you learn is that sometimes the news, it takes a different form. Like Phil Baiti is the news here about the man. What's the news about the man? That he is in the house. But the news here takes a different form. And this part here takes the place of the Khabar. That was like replaces the Khabar. Occupies the space of the Khabar. But this we do next year, inshallah. Next year, January, inshallah. Okay, okay. shukran. Now. Any other questions? Or are you all good? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to do Suratul uh, Fatiha, inshallah. We're going to do Suratul Fatiha, inshallah. Uh, we just find Surah Fatiha and we will do it together as well. Um, I'm just going to see where we did last time. Okay, so in the last so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahibu wa I'm do a few minutes of Surah Fatiha, and if I have time, I'll give you some time to do the next assignment, because you have assignment number two coming up. So you have assignment number two, um, which you which will be sent to you. Uh, it's in the shared folder, uh, which is uh, for next week. And I'm going to ask you all to please hand in assignment number two and assignment number one. So those of you who haven't had it in, if you can please hand in assignment number one. And then we also have assignment number two, which is this one here. Assignment two. So basically, assignment two is doing Ayatul Kursi, part of Baqsur Baqra. It's doing Ayatul Kursi, the first four uh, sentences of Ayatul Kursi. It's one ayah, but there's a number of sentences. So the first four sentences, so sentences Allah, la ilaha illa wal hayyul qayyum, la ta'akhuduhu sinatu wa la nao, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-awdi, man da ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idni. Those four sentences, I ask you a number of questions here, which you can, which is for next week. And then before next week's lesson, inshallah, if you can please submit either via WhatsApp or via email, if you can submit, submit assignment one and assignment two. If you submitted one already, it's fine. But if not, if you can submit one and, and two before Sunday, inshallah, uh, that's, your, that's your homework.